So if we press the command center button, we will have this menu right over here. This will change everything. Everything really. If you are on the market for a smartphone, for a laptop or even a desktop, do not purchase anything until you watch all this video because the Asus ROG Alley will bring to the table something that we don't have at this moment. It will be able to replace a laptop, will be able to replace a desktop or even to make us think if we need to spend so much money on a smartphone or if we want to save on our smartphone purchase to have budget for an Asus ROG Alley which you are going to be blown away when you see the prices for the performance that we have right over here which is what we are going to see on this video. This is the new Asus ROG Alley which will allow us to play serious gaming anywhere that we are. It has a 7 inch multi-touch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, 500 nits at 120 hertz which is just perfect for those that want to enjoy Enjoy action games really fluid and although it's a device that it's targeted to be used as a standalone for just one person if we connect one cable to our TV or to our 200 inches projector and then connect two game pads we can enjoy it with family and friends or if we plug into our display we can just put in our favorite mouse and keyboard and use it as a workstation. It has the latest CPU from AMD the Z1 Extreme which turbo boosts up to 5.1 gigahertz and at this moment as far as I'm aware this is the only device with this CPU. It also has the AMD Radeon with 12 cores at 2.7 gigahertz as GPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and 512 gigs of PCI 4.0 NVMe SSD and if that's not enough it has an ultra fast micro SD slot right over here so that we can expand to have more apps and more games. It comes with Windows 11 Home Edition and all the freedom that we have to install apps and games and by the way if you have a system not this one but any other system that you need to activate your license don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we will find budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen you will get an extra discount. So if we press the command center button we will have this menu right over here which at this moment is in Portuguese so we have the info and for example the monetization we will have all this info CPU GPU APU what that it's being used it weights only 608 grams which on paper sounds a lot but it's not it's really lightweight and the best of all is that in terms of the ergonomic it's well designed it's well built having in mind those intensive users that will use it on a daily basis it also as a Gorilla Glass Victus screen. Our sync so that we can personalize the LED RGBs around the two joysticks and taking a look at the controls on the left side we will find a joystick and the directional buttons, a view button and the command center button which I will explain what we can do with all of this. On the right side we will also have the A, B, X, Y buttons, joystick menu button and armory crate. The right joystick will work as a keyboard and mouse assuming everything that we need to do on any app. The armory crate button will take us to a centralized gaming library designed by ASUS which will aggregate all the platforms that we have. Doesn't matter if it's Steam, Xbox, EA, Battle.net, Epic between others but those were the ones that I did install and we also have access to all the definitions since the configurations of the gamepad, the RGB, Wi-Fi, audio, our sync and also the modification of the command center which if we press the button we will have access to the operation mode, the control mode, the profile for any game that we are using, the monitoring in real time which will allow us to see the frames per second, temperatures and other information without third-party software and other tools that we can access with a single touch of a button. Now the menu button will access the menu on any game without having to mess around with anything. We just need to press it and there we go. And then the view button will open other interactive menus inside of the game depending on the game of course. Now to give it a more console feeling it also has the buttons here on the front which are the LTLB 
RBRT along with the buttons on the bottom which are the M1 and M2 which can be customized but by default if we press one with d-pad up it will bring us the keyboard connectivity wise we have a lot for a small device starting with the power button which is also a sensor for fingerprint so we can log in with just our finger it has the LED for battery and also for the activity volume up and down and my favorite which is the XG mobile interface and it will give us the freedom to have an external GPU like a 3080 Ti 4060 4070 4090 Ti depending on your choice we have tested here on the channel I will leave a link right over here but this will give us the possibility to improve even better the graphics and in the future if we want to upgrade that then we can do so and this is one of the features that will actually replace any desktop even those that have high-end GPUs. It also has a USB Type-C with 10 gigabit speed, a DisplayPort 1.4 output with resolution up to 4K at 120 Hz. Have in mind that my capture card only goes up to 60 Hz, so if you are wondering why 60 Hz, because of my capture card only. It also has the microSD ultra-fast expansion slot, microphones integrated here on the front with noise cancelling and two speakers with a really nice sound and Dolby Atmos. Wi-Fi 6 which got the maximum of my connectivity and Bluetooth 5.2. Before we move on to the gaming experience and the frames per second that I was able to achieve in several games, in terms of raw performance if we take a look at Geekbench 6 results we will see that it has 2329 on single core score and 11087 on multi-core score. You know where you are. This is a beast. It has the same performance of any desktop that we see. But for those that are not, if we take a look at a very well-known computer, the MacBook Pro, the more recent MacBook Pro with the M2 chip, it has the same single core score that the Ali ROG has. Or my Mac Studio with the M1 Max, which is my desktop on the daily usage, has exactly the same single core score. If we take a look at the multi-core score and compare it with an Intel CPU, for example, we will have the same performance of a desktop CPU of 12th generation, the i7-12700, for example. So this is massive, it's huge and it will change everything. I'll show you a few more numbers, Cinebench 3D Mark, Wi-Fi and disk speed, just in case I didn't, so you may pause the video and take a look, but if you want real results, then just wait till the end or go to the timestamps and you will be able to check that out. In terms of battery, which is something that I was curious to know, I did two tests, one in turbo mode and one in performance mode. We also have the silent mode, but I believe that for gaming that's not really the option. So for the turbo mode, the first test that I did, I was able to have it on 100% and during 10-11 minutes I was playing Overwatch 2 and we got the battery depleted on those 10-11 minutes to 84%. This means that we will have 1 hour and 8 minutes of usage using the turbo mode. On the performance mode I did charge it completely again to 100% and playing Overwatch once again 10-11 to 11 minutes. On performance mode it did deplete the battery from 100 to 93 so in this mode we will have 2 hours and 50 minutes more or less which is great for the performance that we have and in my opinion this will be the balance if you are on the go and before the gaming just a conclusion and my opinion this device will change everything if we are wondering to purchase a laptop in my opinion probably i would really see if i have the need to and probably i would get for school for presentations word documents and so on and so forth i would get a cheaper machine like a chromebook having a budget enough for the rock alley which will open a world of possibilities that no laptop will be able to give me the same will happen with the desktop i will really need to think if I need a desktop or if I prefer to have this portable machine which will give me a desktop like performance but at the same time having the freedom of a portable machine because if I unplug the cable from my display I can take it anywhere and have the best of 
both worlds and no desktop will be able to give me this. At the same time, if I'm looking for a smartphone, usually we want the best like we have seen on the Asus ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, link right over here. Probably I would not spend that much. I would prefer to spend a little less and get a good smartphone, but have budget to get a ROG Ali, which once again will change everything on my daily usage, taking this to a different level that no phone will be able to give. The Z1 Extreme is a beast of a CPU and I really wish to see it in more machines because this is the beauty of technology. And having that said, now I'm going to shut up and leave you with the results in terms of gaming in two modes, performance mode and turbo mode, which I only discovered after doing some tests on performance, so just have that in mind. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one. There's one thing that I was missing, which is if we go to the settings, I was playing on the uh, performance mode, but there is also the silent mode, which only consumes 9 watt, and the performance which was where we were so far and we can also go to the turbo mode and one thing that we can see right over here is the difference at this moment medium settings we are with instead of the 40 frames per second we are reaching 70s 80 frames per second which is really awesome on Forza Horizon 5. We are still with graphics in medium, preset medium, full HD, 1920 by 1080 and wow. Let me just restart and a little bit more darkness on the scene. So 55, 60 frames per second, completely different, almost. It's not the double, but almost the double that we were getting on the performance mode. So I had to try Overwatch again and we are getting different results now with the turbo mode. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, we are overing the 90 frames per second, which is a completely different result. I was happy with the previous results, but now, ooh, wow, this is really impressive preset high sorry preset high and if we go to our settings here we have the turbo mode which i thought that the performance was the maximum but no turbo is the so really convinced 100 frames per second and overing the 80 frames per second on the high preset plants vs zombies and medium settings which i will show in just a few moments Bam, there we go. So if we go to the menu right over here, really quick, because I'm getting hit. And if we go to video, we are with medium presets. So at this moment, we are above 40 frames per second. Really cool. And the frames per second, as we can see, hopefully you can see on screen, 45, 42. Okay, hi. We can see a drop. So we will go to a, around 30 frames per second on these settings still on high and sometimes it drops below the 30 frames per second so probably not the best scenario for the horizon 5 and graphics on medium preset and the experience is really really good so far we are with an average of 40 frames per second on a race environment and sometimes it drops like it is right now 30 something the lowest that i see that i saw was 34 35 frames per second but i don't see the need to lower the graphics less than minimum on forza horizon 5 which is convincing me less confusion here so we are above 45 frames per second we were so overwatch 2 and with the preset on high so let's see how it behaves set high and the experience is flawless we are talking about 67 and then it drops sometimes to 57 at this moment when there's a little bit more of demanding uh, graphics on screen but the experience is really really cool when there's action it will drop to 50s 50 something but but really really playable i would not change this
from the height settings. If I wanted more frames per second, maybe medium, but even though I don't justify, I prefer to have the graphics like this, which are really, really cool. And the experience of gaming is also really fluid. 